As tensions rise across the Indo-Pacific, the Philippines is quietly making one of its boldest moves yet. Not a new warship, not a missile system, but something far more powerful and controversial. The Philippines incumbent President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has just signed the Philippine National Nuclear Energy Act, officially opening the door for nuclear power. For the first time in history, after nearly 40 years of debate, the country that built the first nuclear plant in Southeast Asia might finally be ready to press the on switch. But how did a decades-old relic from the Marcos Sr. era suddenly become the cornerstone of the Philippines' future? And what, or who, is driving this nuclear comeback? Let's rewind. Our story begins in the 1970s. The first day of the odd-even system was a disaster. Gas lines at many stations were a lot longer than normal. The world was in the middle of an oil crisis. Prices were soaring. And like everyone else, the Philippines was desperate for an alternative. That's when President Ferdinand Marcos Sr. made a bold call to build the nation's first nuclear power plant. The chosen site, Bataan, a scenic spot overlooking the West Philippine Sea. The contractor, Westinghouse Electric of the United States. By 1984, the plant was finished, costing nearly $2.3 billion, a massive sum back then. But it never generated a single watt. Why? Because in 1986, two things happened. Chernobyl and people power. When Corazon Aquino took office, she shut down the Bataan plant, citing safety concerns, corruption scandals, and massive public fear. From then on, the Bataan nuclear power plant became a ghost. A billion-dollar monument to what could have been. For decades, it sat idle, guarded, maintained, and never used. According to the National Power Corporation, the government has spent millions each year just to keep it intact, even as other countries powered entire cities with the same technology. It became a running joke, a haunted dream of Filipino progress. But as energy prices climbed and blackouts returned, people started asking, what if we got it running again? Because somewhere inside that old reactor lies a possibility that refuses to die. And in 2025, it's about to come back to life. Fast forward to today. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has just made history. By signing the Philippine National Nuclear Energy Act of 2025 into law, in a report by Inquirer.net, the law lays the groundwork for the peaceful and regulated use of nuclear energy in the Philippines. From power generation to medical and industrial applications. It also creates the Philippine Nuclear Regulatory Commission, which replaces the old PNRI framework, aligning the country with international standards. For Marcos Jr., this isn't just an energy plan. It's a legacy move. In his words, we cannot let fear define our energy future. According to the Department of Energy, nuclear power could reduce the country's electricity costs by as much as 30% and help stabilize a grid plagued by brownouts and expensive imports. And with power demand projected to double by 2040, the Philippines needs new sources, fast. This law marks the first time in history the country has a comprehensive legal foundation for nuclear power. But passing a law is one thing. Building and reviving reactors is another. So who's helping the Philippines go nuclear this time? That's where the story gets really interesting. Gone are the days when going nuclear meant giant concrete megastructures and Cold War fears. Today's nuclear tech is smaller, safer, and modular. This is the Small Modular Reactor, or SMR, the future of nuclear energy. In 2024, new scale power from the US and Korea Hydro and Nuclear Power, KHNP, both expressed interest in working with the Philippines to deploy these compact reactors. According to Nikki Asia, 
DOE Secretary Rafael Latilla confirmed that feasibility talks are ongoing, particularly for rural and island provinces that rely on costly diesel generators. SMRS are small enough to fit on a barge or in a container, yet powerful enough to power an entire city. That's perfect for an archipelago like the Philippines, where transmission lines don't always reach far-flung islands. It's also safer, with built-in passive cooling systems that make meltdowns nearly impossible. The U.S. isn't alone either. Japan is stepping in to help train Filipino engineers in nuclear safety, a network of modern reactors that can power factories, bases, and even islands across the archipelago. But there's one big question left hanging in the air. If these partnerships and new technologies are so promising, why even talk about bringing the Bataan nuclear power plant back to life? Well, because that old giant still has some fight left in it. And that's exactly what we'll explore next. Now here's where it gets really interesting. After decades of silence, the Bataan nuclear power plant is stirring back to life. In an April 2025 report by CNN Philippines, the Department of Energy confirmed that the government, together with the IAEA, had launched a new feasibility study to determine what it would take to bring Bataan online. Initial findings? It's possible, but expensive. According to DOE estimates, refurbishing and modernizing the plant could cost around $1 billion. That includes upgrading its old safety systems, replacing outdated control technology, and meeting new international standards. It's a tall order. But here's the kicker. The structure itself? Very much solid. Thanks to decades of maintenance by the National Power Corporation, the plant's reactor containment, cooling systems, and turbine halls remain remarkably preserved. In fact, IAEA experts who visited in 2024 noted that the Bataan facility remains one of the most well-maintained dormant nuclear plants in the world. DOE Secretary Rafael Lutilla said it best. Bataan may not just be a symbol of the past. It could become the training ground for the Philippines' nuclear future. Still, not everyone's thrilled about it. For some, the return of Bataan reopens old wounds, memories of corruption, dictatorship, and fear. And that's where the political storm begins. But that tension, that fear, is exactly what the government now wants to overcome. And that brings us to one of the biggest challenges of all, public trust. And that's exactly what we'll explore next. Many Filipinos still remember Chernobyl and Fukushima. To them, nuclear doesn't mean progress. It means danger. Groups like Greenpeace Philippines and local activists in Bataan have long opposed the idea of restarting the plant, calling it unsafe and unnecessary. But the Marcos administration is betting that education will change minds. The Philippine Nuclear Research Institute has launched a nationwide campaign explaining how modern nuclear reactors are fundamentally different cleaner, safer, and more efficient. In a speech earlier this year, President Marcos Jr. said, We must learn from the past, not run from it. The atom that once inspired fear should now inspire confidence. But behind the inspiring words lies a bigger motive. It's something much larger. Because when you look closely, it's about independence and power. For decades, the Philippines has been extremely dependent. Dependent on imported oil dependent on foreign coal, and now increasingly dependent on liquefied natural gas, much of which comes from the same countries competing for influence in the South China Sea. According to DOE data, the Philippines imports more than 50% of its total energy supply. And as demand keeps rising, those imports become a vulnerability, especially in times of conflict or market shocks. That's why nuclear power matters. It's not just clean, it's sovereign. It also fits into the global shift, from fossil fuels to carbon-free energy. And there's one more angle, the military one. Energy independence strengthens national security. A country that controls its own power supply is far harder to pressure, embargo, or destabilize. For nearly half a century, the Philippines' nuclear dream was buried under fear, politics, and dust. 
the Bataan nuclear power plant became a symbol of what could have been, a monument to hesitation. But times have changed. With a new law, new technology, and new allies, the country is finally taking control of its own energy destiny. Because in a world racing toward uncertainty, the Philippines might just find its strength in the one force it once feared the most.